So a couple of months ago, I switched day jobs and started working for my friends over at Bidwell Wood Company. We build custom furniture as well as do some metal fab, and we also sell C-channel for tabletops and slabs. The shop was pretty low on clamps, so I hit up the wonderful people over at Pony Jorgensen, and they were nice enough to send us some of their awesome clamps. And I decided to come up with a cart to store the clamps, as well as some other stuff. So far what you've seen is just me going through and breaking down the plywood for the main body of the cart. It's pretty boring, I know. Had a lot of plywood cutting to do here. But here's a cool shot of the track saw doing work. Anyway, I always label all my pieces, especially when doing something like this or like cabinets where you have a lot of the pieces that look really similar. It makes it a lot easier to keep track. Once I had the larger pieces cut, I went over to the miter saw and cut all the smaller pieces for the clamp racks, sandpaper storage, tool storage, dividers, and the boxes that mount on the side. I assembled pretty much this whole cart with these Power Pro inch and a quarter screws. I could have used pocket screws, but I wanted to kind of hurry up and get this done, and I wanted to try these out. They work really well and countersunk nicely. They technically don't need a pre-drilled hole, but I went ahead and did it anyway because plywood likes to split, especially when you're driving it into the end grain, so to speak. Mounting the center divider was a little bit tricky. I used 12 inch spacers to hold it up off the bench while I screwed it in from the sides. It had to be offset a little bit because the sustainers I wanted to store in there are 12 inches deep, so I needed to make sure there was plenty of room for those. I didn't use glue on most of this because I just didn't think it was necessary for this project. It seems impossible to make everything line up perfectly when doing panels like this, especially when you design it for 3 quarter inch material and the plywood is 18 millimeter. But this monster flush trim bit helps out with that a ton. I use the spiral combination flush trim bit from Bits and Bits Company in any place where the plywood was overhanging. I will leave a link to it as well as all the other tools I use in this video in the description below for you guys to check out. In some situations in this build, it was easier to use pocket holes, like in the dividers for the sustainers, which is what these are. I fastened the faceboard on the side that didn't have the sustainers, and then flipped the card over, dropping things, and being awkward, trying not to ruin it. It's pretty big after all. It measured six foot tall and four feet wide. Clearly not for my shop. Once I get it flipped over, I could attach the dividers for the sustainers and then attach the face board on this side. Then it was time to attach the casters. I used double locking three inch casters for this, but now after having it for a little bit, I probably should have used four inch, but we'll see how they hold up. I added another block of plywood for some more support using glue and brad nails. I also added some threaded inserts that accept six millimeter flathead screws or bolts, whatever you want to call them. It makes it a lot stronger. Full disclosure, when taking it off the bench, it slid down, hit the ground at an angle on the caster and broke the block off. So I got it back up on the bench and added these screws for some more strength and it's been just fine ever since. Probably should have done that in the first place. 
You can clearly tell now by the size of this thing that it is not for my shop. The shop at work is pretty massive, about 15,000 square feet, so we have plenty of room to roll it around. But I had to move it outside while I worked on the rest of it so I could move around the shop. I went back over to the miter saw and cut out all the angled pieces for the boxes that hang on the sides. I figured these would be good to store things like glue, tape, and whatever else fits in them. Once the pieces were all cut, I assembled all the boxes. There were six overall. Then it was time to cut the pieces for the clamp hangers and assemble those. I used a backer board and pocket screws to build this separately from the cart, that way I could just put it all up as one assembly. Made it much easier. Measuring and marking took actually longer than assembling them, but I got it done. Then I moved on to cutting the pieces for the sandpaper storage and the tool storage boxes. At this point I was pretty tired of cutting plywood. I designed the storage boxes to use dados for the shelves, so I marked those out and then went to cut them on the table saw. For the quarter inch slots, I set my blade height to a quarter inch and I left the standard blade in and then just moved it a little bit to make two passes until the MDF fits snug. Once I assembled it, I could slide all the shelves in to test fit, but I did not glue them in just yet. Then I actually switched out to a dado stack for the larger dados that the tool storage box uses. Once everything was assembled, I could bring the cart back in and then I measured and marked where I needed to put things and attached them all with inch and a quarter screws. Stick around till the end to figure out why putting the sandpaper box here was a bad idea. Also you see why I didn't glue in the shelves because I wouldn't have been able to get my impact driver in there to drive the screws in and attach the box to the center divider. But now I can glue them all in so they stay in place when the cart's being moved around. You ever make beats with your impact driver? Yeah, me neither. Even though it's not for my personal shop, I still want people to know who made it. So I used my Gearheart Industry branding iron to leave my logo. If you guys want your own custom brand, I will leave a link and a coupon code in the description below. Oh, and the water just makes the brand a little bit more crisp. Once the cart was done, I rode it over to work and started filling it up. At 
At this point, it was already much heavier than I thought it was going to be, but it ended up being all right. Here you can see the mistake I made. The clamp won't quite fit in there. It hits the sandpaper box just a little bit. I may move the box down in the future, but it works all right for now. I tried to make room in the cart for everything that you would need during a glue up. Last but not least, I added some two and a half inch screws to the side so I could hang my band clamps. Is that what they're called? Strap clamps? I don't know. Those things. I'm so stoked to have this in the shop at work. It's gonna provide so much organization and make the workflow go a lot better. If you guys wanna see more videos that are shop organized oriented, check out this video right here. We'll see you on the next one.